printing stinks. Literally, I mean, like, it, it stinks. Ask anyone who has had a 3D printer for a week, maybe two, maybe three-ish, give or take, and uh, they will tell you that there are smells, even PLA. Yes, there are some smells, and generally they're considered harmless. Uh, very small amounts of VOCs and other toxic things coming off PLA. ABS, ASA, nylons, those are a whole different ballgame. Very different. We're talking PLA. And um, I have noticed that in my basement, after long printing sessions, that I start to get a little bit of a headache and that the air quality is probably not the best. So I need to come up with a solution because this little thing right here that comes with your Creality K1C doesn't cut it. I can't speak to any other printer brand, but I'm sure there's something similar if it is enclosed. So what can I do about that? Well, I think I can design something. I mean, I do have a 3D printer, and um, yeah, we have access to FreeCAD. So why don't we get to it? Let's get to designing. All right, we are here in FreeCAD, ready to draw our sketch here to make our filter box from the ground up. Are you ready? Because here we go. got everything all squared away we've got everything here we got our nice little logo here print layer playhouse don't forget to subscribe and like i managed to remember before it was too late to put in a couple notches right here and here for the wiring for the fans to come out so you know they can get electricity we're going to do this we've got this all set up i fixed all my issues here that i think i can figure out put in my tolerances so there right now is nothing left to do except to slice the plate. There we go. Five hours and 19 minutes. We've got a couple supports there, a couple supports there. I guess that does it for now. I have everything all set. There's nothing left to do to print. So I guess I will see you guys in about uh, two seconds, give or take. And here it is from the... Mind of the creator, to the screen of the computer, to the print of the 3D, we have the first version right here, right now. Let's test fit it. Son of a... It doesn't fit. I didn't make it right. It doesn't fit. Does the fan fit? Ooh, the, f the fan barely fits. So, um... Back to the drawing board and taking some measurements. So there we have it, version two, which is actually version four on my computer because versions one and two didn't go so well. This was version three. And uh, let's see how this test fit goes. So this is the intake side. I have a nice little circle here. It has a bit of a ridge there. I didn't do the best of job cleaning off the supports here, but hey, you know what? It's it's fine. This is just really to test fit everything. So the order is fan, filter, fan, filter. And we're going to test the fan. <gasps> she fits. Ooh, does the fan or filter fit? Uh, yes. This is with 0.2 millimeter tolerances. It fits perfect. I measured everything right the second time, third time, whatever. Measure um, once, cut, print, five, two times. Measure once, cut, twice. Damn it. I know this. Little bit of materials here, what you need if you want to build something similar. You will need a 120 millimeter computer case fan that has good static pressure. And now I chose the Be Quiet Pure Wings 3 because it is 10 bucks and it has really good static pressure and it is really quiet. I have a couple of these as well as Noctua fans in my PC and I can hardly hear that unless I'm really pushing hard in like cyberpunk or something. Now the filters, that was a little bit 
trickier because I had to find something that was compact and also HEPA filter, also activated charcoal. So this is the Hunter brand. It's a five inch by five inch. So it is a bit larger than the 120 mil fans, but not too bad. It has this nice HEPA filter here for, I believe, two and a half to three microns. And then on the leading side here, it has some activated carbon to help catch those VOCs and work on it. Now these are rated to run in room filters for 12 to 18 months. So I figure if I'm running this on my 3D printer, I should be good for about 12 months or so and just replace this roughly every Christmas time. So for Christmas, if anybody's looking for a present, you can go ahead and get me these wonderful Hunter 5 inch square fans. All the list of everything will be down there. And I will also have the uh, CAD files and STL files uploaded to probably Thingiverse, maybe Thangs. But let's get back to printing the full set of this, which, you know, this is smart to only go a little bit here. I have only maybe a quarter of this, like, eh, probably less than that, an eighth, because it saved on time and materials. So let's go ahead and kick it for about six hours and see what the printer can do on a full-fledged print. This is a K1C um, exhaust bracket, the exhaust thing that you put on the back, this guy here, 3D printed version with this um, 70 millimeter, 90 degree angle adapter. This is from C3 Garage, C3D Garage. I'll have that all linked in the description below. So if you have a K1 or a K1C, you'll need to print out two different files to be able to do this. Uh, if not, then you will have to find something else. However, your enclosed printer works. I'm not sure there's tons of different ones out there, but uh, you will need it to end up at 100 mil to be able to work with your four inch dryer vent. This is four inch by about three feet. It's not about three feet. It is three feet. That's what I bought. It comes with these sweet little uh, worm screws on there so you don't have to worry about anything. And uh, well... Da, 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 da. Check that out. I put some uh, handy little stuff on here, like the uh, Print Layer Playhouse logo, as well as the airflow direction on both sides so that you know which way it goes. This side, the big circle, is the intake, and this side is the outflow. Uh, these crossbars here with the circle are just kind of there for show, basically. Uh, this printed out, it took about six hours, give or take. Uh, you will notice that I have some black uh, markers here. These are um, unused flow rate markers. Um, the reason that they're on there is I made the dips in these, uh, the exits for the cables a little bit too big, and they were letting too much air leak out. I made the measurements based on the Noctua fans, and Noctua bundles their cables together into a circle, where uh, you can see here... These black cables right here are flat, these be quiet cables. So that needed to get changed. And rather than reprinting this entire thing for that tiny little change, I went ahead and changed the file. So you will have the corrected file for that. But I went and did a little redneck engineering. So why don't we go ahead and get this assembled here? I'm going to go ahead and put in my first fan making sure to pay attention to the arrows, that the arrows are pointing backwards towards this side here. So I got that one in there. Beautiful. And there is airflow indicators on these Hunter ones as well, but you want it to go, the air to be pushed from the activated charcoal, the black side, through to the white side. So that goes ahead and slots in right there. Oh, that's snug. So snug. Right there. Perfect. Nailed it. And then we go with another fan here. Again, making sure that we get our airflow correct. Almost didn't have it correct. That would have been embarrassing. There we go. And then finally, last but not least, we're going to have our last filter here. There we go, slide that in, perfect. There's also a separate file for the lid, which has these bump outs, so it is directional. These bump outs go over the fans to help keep them in place, help block the air, and force the air to go through the filter rather than around it. 
and it just snaps right on. The tolerances are pretty tight, so it's okay if you got to force it on there. Do not glue it on there because you will at some point have to change the filter. Okay? So, next step, you're going to take your dryer vent here, stretch it out a little bit, grab your 100 mil elbow here, or I believe there's also a straight file too, and slide her on. There we go. And then you're just going to want to tighten that down good and snug. Just want to pay attention if you hear any like cracking or any sounds like that of stress on the plastic. You gone too tight. It doesn't need to be that tight. You're okay. Just back it off a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is take this other side, fit it over this lip, which I'll admit is a bit on the tight side, but that's okay. We'll survive. Again, tighten this nice and snug. That lip on there should help prevent any air flow back, like back flow. And we have it all set. So why don't we go ahead, plug her in and see how it goes. All right. So sorry if the audio quality is a little bad, but I got my shotgun mic doing what I can. I got everything here. One thing I forgot to mention was in here, I put a little extra piece of activated carbon charcoal pad that you can buy off of Amazon for a couple bucks. Cut it to put it in here just for that little extra capture of VOCs, just in case. So all you're going to do is take this, go ahead, pop it right on where it belongs as you normally would. It fits on there nice and snug, no problem. And we're going to take our Noctua controller with a three-way splitter here, and I'm going to plug in my cables to two of them. Turn it on. Little orange light means it's on. I can feel some airflow. I can feel air getting pulled in through the little gap over here by the screen. So everything's working as it should. I have it up about three quarters of the way um, through some other testing. Uh, about three quarters to full go for PLA, and I don't smell a thing. Uh, I've had this system running now for about a week and I've noticed a big change. Now, I know they say that this isn't a big deal, but with uh, small children and small animals in the house, I'm not taking any uh, chances. And on top of that, my own health, being down here in the basement a lot, I'm doing everything I can to not have prolonged exposure to low levels of whatever is coming out of here. So if you enjoyed this episode, Go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I can extrude some value out of that YouTube algorithm and other people can find this channel. If you liked what I did here, let me know in the comments below. If I could have done something better, let me know. Constructive criticism. Fantastic. So thank you all for watching and I can't wait to see you all in the next episode.